Well, there have been some major milestones recently confronting contaminants known as forever chemicals. PFAS is a class of industrial compounds that's used in household items to military grade fight firefighting foam. And that foam is believed to have contaminated the drinking water supply at the former Pease Air Force Base in New Hampshire. The state of New Hampshire just approved one of the country's strictest standards for PFAS in drinking water. A new treatment plant at Pease went online this week, removing the threat of the compounds from the water supply. Secretary of Defense Mark Esper's first day on the job included creating a task force to deal with cancer-causing chemicals found on military bases. But thousands of people exposed to the chemicals are still in the dark about the long-term health impact. New Center's Vivian Lee reports from Portsmouth. Two of Andrea Amico's children have higher than normal levels of PFAS chemicals in their blood. They drank contaminated water while at daycare at the former Pease Air Force Base. Her husband was also exposed working at the trade port. These chemicals will be there for a long time. Mm -hmm. And my children were exposed at such early ages. You know, how did that affect their development and formation of their organs. She spent years fighting for a federal health probe into the health impact of so-called forever chemicals. The Centers for Disease Control's first ever national health study into the effects of PFAS will take place at a number of different communities throughout the country. Now the PEAS study will be smaller, but the project will serve as a proof of concept for the national study. Medical experts will look at blood samples from 1,000 adults, 350 children, and more than 250 people who were never exposed to PFAS. The majority of the participants are believed to have worked right here on the base. But the data won't be available for at least five years. That's why Andrea is pushing for a medical monitoring program to give doctors a way to screen for the effects of PFAS during routine visits. Another concern, protecting people from eating shellfish from Great Bay. The tidal estuary covers over 6,000 acres. Waters from the bay flow into the Piscataqua River, which borders Maine. Tests done on oysters and clams collected from several brooks that flow into the bay show very high levels of PFAS. This is the level of a compound discovered in one oyster. Environmental scientist Mindy Mesmer studied the data. In the range of 55,000 parts per trillion. So much, much higher than the 10 part per trillion range that we look at in drinking water. Mesmer is working to get the information about the PFAS being found in the shellfish posted in public parks and other areas popular for fishing around Great Bay. Gail Longvale has seen many people harvesting shellfish under the bridge near this park. All the people that fish here and, and, and the folks that, that get the clams and the snails, um, no, they're not aware and they're putting this into their bodies. Mesmer is hopeful she can get the state to post signs until it's determined that the shellfish in the area are safe to eat. In Newington, New Hampshire, Vivian Lee, New Center, Maine.